Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Real Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Coming from a biracial family, racism, my white side is hella racist. I want everybody to look at mental health like they look at physical health. Mm -hmm. You have to, if you don't use it, you lose it. Real Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Talk Session Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Taryn Morgan, the founder and creative director of the Real Talk Session Series. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Today, I am in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, at Paradise Recording Studios. And I have the pleasure of being with your favorite therapist, yeah. favorite therapist, Miss Alex. What's going on? Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. I've been seeing you online grinding and especially when it comes to mental health and doing it from a culturally competent perspective. Yes. So I could appreciate that. Yes, you know? yes. That is my passion. That is my purpose. And that's what I was put on this earth for was to really promote mental health and just uh, give everybody the opportunity to learn more about it and realize that it's important for all of us every and other and everyone um i really want to like kill the stigma that's yeah. my that's my game plan and that's the main thing i've been focusing on right now with the road talk session series we focus on education we focus on criminal justice reform but right now we're focusing on mental health awareness and i mean amazing. so i saw you there doing your thing so i'm like i gotta have you thank you here. thank you so much for having me i'm so excited to no, talk it, to you. it's my pleasure all right so how did you even get inspired to get into the mental health field Oh, this is going to be a long one, guys. <laughs> my childhood, point okay. blank period. And my, the things that I saw my parents go through. Okay, so basically, when I got a little bit older, first I realized that both my parents didn't live up to their full potential. Mm. My father was like one of the best cooks in America, like really, like, and I'm not even piping it. And a mm. lot of people told me that. They would fight over him. He was a chef. He went to Hawaii. But unfortunately, because of the childhood trauma, yeah. um, he fell into alcohol. Mm. His mom died when he was younger. He fell into alcohol and drugs and then sex, which mm. ultimately led to him um, contracting AIDS and then dying. Mm. So it was just like, I was like, damn, like you could have been, excuse my language, you could have been very great, like really great. I mean, don't get me wrong. My father was amazing, mm. but it was like he w didn't live up to the best version of him because of the trauma. Same thing with my mother. My mother is, was severely mentally ill um, my whole childhood growing up. Mm. Um, she was diagnosed with bipolar, arachnophobia, um, borderline personality disorder. Wait, hold on, break it down. Arachnophobia. Um, scared to go outside. Okay. Yeah. Um, and she just really struggled. Um, I learned recently she was on drugs as well. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I just thought, you know, she was a little out there. I didn't know she was on drugs. Um, but her as well, she was a great hairstylist. Mm -hmm. And because of the childhood trauma thing she went through as a child, um, when she became an adult, she turned to those drugs, she turned to those different things, and then she just didn't work. We were homeless, like there was a lot of things. So then mm. going into my childhood, um, I was homeless when I was a young child, like dealing with my mom's mental illness, they banished us out the family, basically. They were like, well, we ain't trying to deal with your mom. And because yeah. I was my mom's child, oh, you have to go along with your mom. So I saw a lot of things as a kid, like my aunt, um, we showed up to my aunt being killed like five minutes afterwards. So uh, I was four, that's like one of my first memories. Sorry to hear about that. Yeah. yeah, no, it's okay. I learned a lot and it got me to where I was. And what's crazy is she was a social worker. Mm. So that aunt that passed away, I saw that. It was just a lot of trauma. My father passing away um coming from a biracial family racism my white side is hella racist mm. um so feeling like you don't fit in there and then um sometimes being too light for the african-american side so it's like colorism is yes, real yeah it's, yeah it's real it's real people like always are just like are you what, what's going on i'm just like i'm a human being <laughs> like yeah. you know um but it basically was my childhood trauma i saw how that as i was getting older impact my parents and then myself as well mm. i had depression just a lot of things like i was i was fighting in high school a lot of aggression yeah. and i was like this is not alex i'm the sweetest person ever like i you know like i'm just very nice and i realized no this is all the pain and all the things and then i began to learn about trauma and what it yeah. does to the brain and how it alters the brain and we don't have control over it it's insane it's yeah. very insane and so i became passionate about teaching other people that these things that you did go through as a child are probably impacting you but mm -hmm. it can change you can reverse it like i've made so much progress 
it doesn't make any sense. And I give it all up to God. Like, that's yeah. the other thing. God, like, Thanks. 100% got me through everything. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your story, definitely. Um, people don't understand the impact that childhood trauma has on people. Right. And especially, like, with our parents, they were going, the ones going through the civil rights era, so they had also right. other issues exactly. on top of that. Exactly. And a lot of the research that exists today on mental health was based on that generation. Right. So, you know, it's great that you took a negative situations and turned it into something positive. Right. And especially you seeing the change within yourself because it's hard to develop self-awareness. Exactly. Because we've been so conditioned and programmed and whatnot to not look at ourselves but blame everyone else. Right. So I definitely love what you're doing with that. Um, what So far, what has been a highlight of your career within working in the mental health field? I want to say creating my girls and boys group. Okay. That's so, yeah, and that. also the app, but my boys and girls group was something that I talked about while I was an undergrad. Um, I basically just run a mental health and empowerment group for the boys and the girls mm. at a local high school, and I love it. Like, I love coming in cro across them, and I really started it because in high school I really – I needed guidance, and I had one mentor that really took after me and took me under his wing, and I realized how much that helped when yeah. I was in high school. I feel like I would have been in a whole different place if I didn't have that support. So what I wanted to do was bring that support back to the school, and it's a predominantly white school, so it's designed for the black kids, yeah. and it's designed for them, like it's for their and culture. they need that exactly. within that, that white space. They need a safe it, space. Exactly, and that's yeah. what we wanted to create as a safe space, and for the boys, I bring in other influential black men in the city so okay. that they can, it's really important for them to see people that are doing things that look like them yeah, that's definitely. my whole thing and then uh, uh, letting them know of their, their worth because society yeah. just makes african americans feel like they're not worthy mm -hmm. to be on this earth and i'm really dedicated especially the black man i'm really starting to focus on that dedicated to working with that population and yeah. changing that because it's really, really detrimental to their mind and their self-esteem. Yes. Yeah. There's a ton of work that's needed, you know, and I salute you for that, definitely. And if you need another black male figure, let me know. I'll come I got you. No, I was going to talk to you after that. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> I got you. I got you, definitely. So, oh, yeah, what's the name of your group? Or it's called know? the Worthy uh, Youth Group and then the Maturing to Men. Maturing to Men. Yes. Okay, I like yes. that. I like yes. that. Now, that's only in middle school or, I it's mean, high school? It's in middle school or? and high school. We middle actually school, just school, started okay. in middle school. So I take the high school girls to the middle school. So we have mm. the older girls mentoring. So that intergenerational. School. Right, exactly, exactly. Okay, that's And that's the up. goal. Yeah, so that's, and just doing it. Yeah. You know, I'm not supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. with my story so that's also what i'm proud i'm proud of myself like i have to say that like i'm really not supposed to be here like with statistics show i'm not supposed to get my master's degree my father didn't even graduate from high school mm -hmm. um statistics show i'm supposed to be out there in kensington no offense to everybody in kensington <laughs> that's my next goal too is to go out there but i'm proud that i made it this far yeah. and with god on my side i believe that's why and that's big and i believe i'm a big believer <laughs> in that all of those setbacks those things that move us away from our goal, it's more so like a slingshot where it's pulling back and then boom, you right, keep going. And right, that's what you're doing right now. Right. So, you know, you're proof that whenever you have a plan, whenever you have a purpose, that anything can happen and you can succeed. And you're not a prisoner to your circumstance because exactly. you take action. Exactly. So. What I also learned from it, too, is that that was part of the plan. Yeah. I had to understand what people were going through. That's mm -hmm. how I look at it. Like, there's things that I've gone through, and I'm like, oh, my God, as a therapist, as long as I took time to get my own help, now I can really help others because I can relate. It's just not reading it out of a textbook. Yeah, I've been there. I kind of may have felt the way that you felt and had to take the steps to get my mental health right. Yeah. So it's not like I'm telling you to do something I never did. And that's what I really love about it, too. Yeah, definitely. And especially with me, I experienced mental health issues, depression, anxiety, and had some suicidal ideation me too. Um, all throughout tw 2018. And I never even thought about doing anything with mental health advocacy or even getting in front of this camera. Mm. But all that put me through to build the confidence mm. up and show, it, it really revealed like an onion, like peeling right. layers away. Right, exactly. You know I mean, and like that's one of the things, you know, God makes things happen for a reason. Yes, you know, he does. we Amen. may think that it's a curse, but in disguise, no. it's a blessing. Exactly. You know? And that's what I found about a lot of the things that I went through. It okay. Was a blessing. With therapy, it's heavily stigmatized. Yes. Not only in the black community, but all across the country, yes. all across the world. Yes. So, like, what do you feel is one of the biggest misconceptions of therapy? And, like, what do you say is your proposed plan of action to change that? 
Uh, the biggest misconception is that if you go to therapy, you're a psychopath or you're crazy. <laughs> it's not the case. I want everybody to look at mental health like they look at physical health. Mm -hmm. You have to. If you don't use it, you lose it. If you don't work on it, it's going. Your brain could, you could go, quote, unquote, and I don't like that word, crazy at any moment. It could yeah. happen if you're not working on your brain. So mental health is not just for the person with anxiety and depression. That's for anyone because you could instantly go through something and then your brain could just self-destruct. Trust me, it's it's mm. like that. So I want people um, to really just start looking at mental health like physical health like yeah. you want to get husky you want to be healthy well you need to start working on your mind so i plan the stigma is just like you're crazy especially from my black side like they laugh at me when i first found out i wanted to be a therapist they were yeah. like you know just pray about it mm -hmm. <laughs> more power to you i love god trust me and i pray about it but i do believe that god put me on this earth to do therapy and to yes. help to do some of the things that he needed and now he doesn't need me because he could do everything by himself but i think that he did put us on this earth to help mm. and support others and you're his vessel right I mean, exactly you're, you're exactly his, your destiny so i think that that stigma is just what's really killing us is that people be like oh there's something wrong with you if you go to therapy but you guys love to go to the doctor and you listen to what he has to say and some of y'all don't even go to doctors <laughs> look at your teeth it's nasty <laughs> The dentist might be the next visit. Exactly. But um, so my plan is to just educate. I think it's all about educating individuals yeah. on one trauma, on what our environments are doing, especially if we're from the cities mm. or, you know, vi gun violent environments, what that is doing to our minds. PT I think a lot of our, our men are dealing with PTSD right now just yeah. because of what they're going through. Every every couple months somebody is dying. That's traumatic and that's heavy mm -hmm. on the brain. So and I also like another ahead. level to the PTSD. PTSD, I believe that social media is developing a new form of PTSD because you're seeing that stuff subconsciously, like it's, it's soaking into your mind. I've been doing a lot of research on how social media and technology is impacting the brain, and it is. Mm -hmm. It is basically um, the likes are basically replacing our serotonin, our happy hormones. Yeah. And so we're going to Instagram to feel happy now. And the only mm -hmm. way to feel happy is when we get likes. And then there's like all this competition. People don't realize that everybody on Instagram is faking it until they make it. I've met, mm -hmm. here's the secret. I've met like a couple of these Instagram people and they don't, they don't have all that stuff that y'all see on the gram. And I'm not trying to put them out there, but I don't want you guys, like, I don't want people to think like, this is where I have to be at 23 because so-and-so got this, this, yeah. and that. Stop doing that. Run Just, your respective race. Right, exactly. And trust the process because it's going to yeah. happen. And a lot of people are frauding. So it's like, I think it's just about limiting that. But it is altering the brain. It's changing. Yeah. It's changing. And there's going to be mental health issues or diagnoses pertaining to technology very soon yeah it definitely is now i want to touch back to what you said about mental health can happen to anybody yes literally Anyone. that's what happened to me i always had the i've worked in um, emergency response dealing with college students so i've seen domestic violence i've seen sexual assault i've seen drugs i've seen mental health issues all that stuff so I always was like the type of person saying, oh, this can never happen to me mm -hmm. because we were never educated on it until it happened to me. Mm. And it's one of those things where that stress and really internalizing issues, especially right. when it comes to passing of people, um, situations, you're keeping that inside. You're not properly grieving. Or exactly. So what are some of your techniques for self-care? Because that's very important. That kind of gets out everything that's going on with stress. It's my favorite thing, self-care. So first of all, I, I really need to emphasize that you need to do self-care every day, yeah. like creating a routine. Um, my favorite thing is just a morning and an afternoon routine where it's the same thing that you're doing. Meditation is the key to life. If you don't meditate, it's great. I don't know what to tell you. You're not going to... Yeah. I don't know. You're just not living life right. Um, but really, meditation is the key. It basically is just giving you a chance to turn your brain off. Because when you're asleep, your brain isn't off. And it's yeah. like a phone. is, And anything has to turn off for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's giving your brain a chance to just kind of, all right, let me take this break. Yeah. You know? Um, yoga, exercise, physical activity okay. is the key. And then food. Our food is what we eat is linked to certain mental illnesses. Like they're finding more and more that sugar is linked to depression. Mm. Stuff like yeah. Stuff like that. So what we're eating also impacts our mental health greatly. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm definitely, I see that too, especially with food stuff, because, like, you know, when you're eating all the fried foods and fatty stuff, right? it, like, really takes you down. With me, I used to eat meat, and then I felt uh, differently after changing my diet and whatnot. Everybody says that. Physically, I changed, but also mentally, I felt sharp. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's one of the things that are big. And then also, we're talking about the realm of self-care. I am a legal, keyword legal. Legal. Medical marijuana He's got a patient. card. I got the card. It's going to be in another thing, but, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, so, card. like, that's another form of self-care. So, like, marijuana has been extremely stigmatized. It's more so like um, the prohibition of liquor back in the right. early 1900s. And even the origins of the word marijuana comes from a racist white man that has really pushed the country to say, oh, it's bad, mm -hmm. along with their, those commercials. Remember the, this your egg, your brain on drugs with the egg frying? Which did not work. Dare did not work, by the way. Dare didn't work. <laughs> the, the war on drugs, Ronald Reagan, all that stuff. Hey, it did not work. Yeah. But the fact it was that a setup. it's medical and there's been right. seen at it, but, but yet it's still illegal versus alcohol, which people are out here. It makes you more aggressive. Right. It causes internal issues, problems. So, like, what do you think... It, what's your stance on medical marijuana and also where do you see it going within a couple of years when it comes to treatment for mental health issues? I'm all for medical marijuana as long as it's done in the right amount of dosage. I think anything that you do too much of is not good for you. And then it also depends on what you're struggling with. Um, I would not suggest it for individuals that struggle with depression. Just yeah. because what we does to you, it puts you in this like, I'm slumped, kind of like sitting at times, or, and it depends on what strand you have. I know that yeah. much. Like, Several different strands, yeah. But I find, from the research I've done, sometimes weed and depression don't go together well. Yeah. It kind of makes it worse just mm -hmm. because of what weed does. But I think for like anxiety, PTSD, other physical things, um, stomach aches, just stuff like that. I think it is very beneficial. It's natural. Mm -hmm. um, I think you just have to watch out where you get it from because they are starting to put stuff in it as yeah. well. So it's just about doing your research and being healthy and and doing it in small dosage, not doing it all the time. I think that's yeah. when we do anything too much, it's not good for us. Yeah. So just going back to what you said, like I've seen the research saying that um, it's not good for depression necessarily, but I saw also benefits of microdosing and whatnot. So right. like small little doses. Yeah. Because sometimes when you go, when you smoke too much, it's a psych psychoactive drug. Right. And that causes issues. It's within your brain. Exactly. But if you do too much, but if you use a little bit, then you're good. I exactly. use it for anxiety because the fact of that, I don't want to use it's these perfect. medication. Right. The medication. I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm against medication. Yeah. Like we'll I was that. actually just got off my medication. I was taking Lexapro. And that's more so, I look at the medication as the counterbalance is on the scale, right? So it kind of balances you out. It's a chemical imbalance to all the mental health issues. So when um, recently I lost my job mm -hmm. and being uninsured, I had to see what those prices were like mm. without insurance. Right. What I saw was that my Lexapro, which I need every single day, mm. $120. Right. Something I need to focus mentally to get out of my, you know, the state of depression. Xanax, which is also used for as as needed. So meaning whenever you feel it, right. you take it. Twelve dollars. Right. So like that yes. inequity of costs, I'm like, there's something there. So so I think it's a price like that for a reason because of the pharmaceuticals and whatnot for profit reasons. Yeah. And, and they're contracts keep, with the government. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then when you keep people sick, that's keeping money in. So you're causing a oh, highly yeah. you're putting out a highly addictive drug for mm -hmm. cheap. But yet something that someone needs for a daily is more expensive. So that's something that I see. And also, I think that the pharmaceuticals are pushing the medical marijuana away so that they keep the funds within them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I agree 100 percent. I'm against medication. I'm the type mm -hmm. of therapist where I want to teach you how how do you achieve it without anything? We're not yeah. going to substitute it. We're going to fix it in yeah, that exactly. sense. Like we're well, going to change people, though, don't the... Don't get twisted. Some, some people do need the medication. With the, oh, the treatment doesn't work, though. Yes, yes. There are some... Uh, there are some people that may need to take medication for a little bit. I'm yeah. a true believer that you don't need it for forever. Um, I think yeah. some of the things that they put out there is for the reasons of money. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just a, a revolving door where they want to say, oh, you have this and you have to take this Yes. for that. And a lot of the times I've also found that people are misdiagnosed. 
-hmm. as well because people are not taking the time out. So I think um, I'm I'm not for medication, but marijuana, yeah, like you said, in, yeah. in the right dosage. It's natural. Definitely. It comes from the ground. It's a plant. It doesn't yeah. need any processing. Yeah, You're good. definitely. Legalize it. Help people out. So moving away into like a different field now. So you see the shirts, Worthy. We out here, Worthy Lifestyle. Worthy Lifestyle. So can you explain what that is? Make sure you go on the site too and pick up her uh, shirts. Yes, my you site know. is on the way um, because I can't figure out what I want the URL to be because somebody stole Worthy Lifestyle. Mm, stop selling her stuff. I right. <laughs> I have it, LLC. I'm trademarking it next. I'm coming for y'all. But, uh -huh. um, but, but tell us about Worthy Lifestyle. So Worthy Lifestyle is my empire. It's um, my baby. It's my first started out as my mobile application, which you can download in Apple Store and Google Play. Okay. Um, it's a mental health app. It's basically the gym for your mind. It's designed to make you the best version of yourself. We have blogs on there. We have support groups on there. I have a trainer that you can follow along with. So if you don't have a gym membership, you can work out at home. Also, we have a personal chef on there. Um, I put her on there to provide you guys with healthy recipes because what we eat feeds our brain and then we function from there and that's how we function so it's amazing i love it please make sure you download it i also had interview people too so i'm going to be interviewing him soon yeah. we're going to this change will be on this. the app too. yes you know, yeah i'm gonna put it know. on the app <laughs> but yes download that and then we send out like motivational messages every okay. morning which i get definitely yes. you know, you know. um and it's designed just to help everyone realize that they are worthy no matter what you've been through no matter who you are where you are you are worthy of anything and everything that you put your mind to and becoming the best version of you um i think we self-sabotage a lot of the time and yes. we let the pain just like make us miserable and 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 not care about ourselves or not believe that we are worthy and we are worthy no matter no one can define it but yourself and god you're you are more than worthy so i made these t-shirts so that the mm. world can know as you walk down the street I get a lot of questions like, oh, where'd you get that shirt from? Like, where the lifestyle? Really? Ah, yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. I really got to get that website Just up. this morning, so I, actually, oh, yes. I'm so excited. <laughs> and he gets one on, too. Exactly. So you could definitely hit me up. Um, I'll give you all my stuff info at the end. Okay. And moving away from mental health more so, because I want to get into how black women are becoming one of the biggest groups, growing groups when it comes to business owners. And right, yes. So, like, how did you even get into the app world? Um... It was on my mind for a very long time. Okay, so I'm always thinking, like, how can I? All right, so I want to be a billionaire, y'all, and it's going to happen. So, it's going to happen. Gonna <laughs> so I'm constantly thinking how, and it's not all about the money. I want to help people, yeah. but I want that billions of dollars so I can help more people. Mm -hmm. Um but I constantly been thinking how, what, how, and I'm not going to be lie to you, social workers, therapists, we don't make that much money. Yeah. I mean, it can be good, but it depends on um your population so i was like i need i need to survive and That's i was like mental income right you know? and i was like you know what also with mental health our clients hardly kind of don't show up all the time it's like 50 50 i yeah. mean which is expected anxiety depression a lot of those things i'm not showing up either so i was like but they have phones mm. they all have phones meeting people where they are <laughs> exactly and i was like okay you can't get out the house but let's stop let's start here so i wanted to be the first step to your treatment like oh i could download this app and i could start reading on this and implementing this and working out and doing this and then maybe when i get the courage or when the time is right i can go on the resources tab and find mm. me a therapist okay that's what's up and best yes. of all it is free now oh, oh yeah mm -mm, we ain't charging y'all <laughs> it's yes, free it is free definitely Try to take care of your mom for free <laughs> yep yep so it's been a pleasure we're gonna wrap up a little bit but something that i always do at the end of especially for women because i always want to provide them a megaphone to talk to society so here's your chance to say a message to society and to men so what would you like to say to them okay so <laughs> a message from your favorite therapist from your favorite therapist favorite therapist favorite therapist yeah <laughs> is to know your worth no matter what has happened to you in your past no matter what is going to happen to you today or tomorrow is to know that you are nothing but worthy and anything that you put your mind to you can complete for my african-american queens out there know that you are gorgeous that you are beautiful and that anything that you put your mind to you can do so yeah. for my kings society has tried to beat you down and try to make you seem like you are lesser than what you are and honestly 
that's only because they're jealous and they want to be in your skin. Mm -hmm. um, not on no get out. And not, and yeah, <laughs> not on no get out. But at the end all be all, know that you are kings and queens and that you are, once again, worthy of completing and doing anything. All right, I see Take you care there. of yourself and download the Worthy Lifestyle. Know your worth. All right, she got it, she got that. All right, see you right there, see you right there. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Please let the people know how they can reach out to you and also Worthy Lifestyle and how they can access your services. Of course. Okay, so website will be coming soon. I'm going to let him know so he can post it on his page as soon as I get that link up. Um, but you can follow me at Oh So Juicy. I used to like Juicy Couture in high school, so that's where that came from <laughs> um that's and that's so just oh wait, wait, hold on, bring it back. so like in high school <laughs> dang sister not nothing to walk <laughs> it just stuck then everybody yeah. started calling me oh so juicy people love it yeah. like even in the studio yesterday everybody was like oh so juicy i was like oh. <laughs> <laughs> i can't so change it i can't change yeah. it um and then we have worthy underscore lifestyle underscore score on the instagram and then your you are worthy lifestyle dot uh, at at gmail.com. It'll Sorry be at the end. So you yeah, about yeah, that. yeah. Um, you can hit me up on there. You can hit me up on the app, too. There's a way to contact me through the app um, and Instagram. So Oh So Juicy would probably be the fastest way or Worthy Lifestyle. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, I appreciate you having me. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you for having me. And once again, shout out to Paradise Recording Studios down yes. in Pens Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, gave me a little tour. Got a uh, podcast room, several studios. So if you're in Philly, you need a spot to record at. This is your spot right here. So yes, yes. Thank you so much for ho hospitality. No All right. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Real Talk Session, where we're all about real talk only. The revolution will be digitized. Thank you. Real Talk Session Series, the revolution will be digitized. Oh, yeah. Talk session series, the revolution will be digitized. Sir, it's pretty simple, the revolution will be digitized.